stop typing so much. <laughs> so a lot of people think, you know, I do a lot of what I do, probably most of what I do on a computer through the shell, and they think, oh, that's typing a lot. I was showing someone how to do use YouTube DL the other day, uh, and like, so I have to type this every time I want to download a YouTube video? It's like, no, <laughs> no. Uh, the, you watch these tutorials, people show you how to do stuff in the shell, they show you that so you know how to do it, and then you create aliases, functions, scripts, or even just shortcuts for this stuff. So I'm going to give you a few examples here on stuff I do through Shell. And like in the last video I did, I showed you how to use SFTP and SCOPY and all that stuff to transfer files from a computer. Well, you don't need to do that. So let's say I wanted to log in my son's computer. You know, I could go SSH, Connor, at, and then type in his IP address for his computer. No, on my computer, I just type in Connor. And then I type in my password and I'm at his computer. If I wanted to transfer files using SFTP, I have an alias for him. I just type in Connor S and I can hit tab for SF SFTP. And then again, I type in this and oop, I typed the wrong key there. Now I'm in his directory I, or on his computer. I can go through, I can copy files back and forth. Uh, again, let me show you, uh, I'll just alias and I'll grep for my aliases with his name. And you can see this is, this is the alias. I just alias Connor to this. I use alias Connor SFTP to this command. It, it's super simple. Um, but let's get a little more complicated than that. Let's talk about my daughter's computer and her tablet. If I type in just her name, it actually runs a script that has uses FZF, which gives me a little menu here. If I want to SSH into a computer, I choose that and hit enter. SFTP into her computer, I can hit enter there. If I want to SSH into her tablet, I choose that. If I want to go to her files, because I have her files synchronized to my computer, I can choose files and it'll bring me to that directory. If I choose sync, it will sync the files from that directory and synchronize them with her, uh, I believe tablet is what I have that set up for, or I can just quit. Uh, her computer's not on right now and her tablet isn't on, so I'm not gonna show you that. But again, also I have an alias uh, or a script for my wife. I type in her name and I can SSH into her computer. I can SFTP into her computer, or I can go to her directory. Her phone synchronizes with our server, which synchronizes with my computer. So if I want to go to her most recent photos, I can choose that and it will bring me to that directory. So those are some examples. Uh, now we can get to, to you know, the more fun stuff. If I just type in phone on my computer, I have lots of options here. I have my phone plugged in through USB here. If I choose shell, it starts up ADB and I get a shell and I can start doing stuff through ADB on uh, my phone. ADB is the Andro Android Android debugging bridge. If I type in phone again, I can SSH it when I enable SSH on my on my phone, which is just a matter of typing SSHD in Termux. I can use SFTP if I want to transfer files to it. If I want to, if I choose directory, it's going to move me to a directory on my computer here that synchronizes uh, with my phone, so I can modify the files and push them over. If I type in phone again, I can come up here, I can search through packages. This just used ADB to list all packages installed on my phone, and now I can search through and see what packages are installed. So like simple calculator, gallery, phone, you know, and so I can see quickly all the packages that are installed on this phone. If I do phone again, I can do back up the packages so I can pull packages down. I can upgrade packages. Kill kills ADB server because sometimes you need to do that. Screen opens up a screen. So here is my phone here. And I can, well, I'm not going to show you my passphrase. <laughs> but I can go through there and I actually have my phone up on my screen here. Um, actually, let me quickly unlock it. I guess I could just use a finger, fingerprint reader. I didn't need to type in my code. If I can type in screen, again, I'm using uh, FCF so I can actually type you know, screen and get it. I don't have to go up through the whole menu. And then here I'm, I can just see everything that's on my screen and I can do stuff that way. Um, if I type in phone again, I can come up here. Shell is the same as the shell at the bottom. I just have it in there. Uh, it's probably the most used that I use. So I use ADB, so I have it. It's first thing on the list, but then everything else is listed um, uh, alphabetically, I believe. Uh, so push and pull using ADB. If I want to pull a file, so this runs an ADB command that lists all the files in uh, my my um, directory on my phone. So I do that, and again I'm using FCF, so I'm listing all these files. I can go music, and I can see these files. I can type in something like um, uh, Beck, how about that? And I can find a Beck song here, like Loser, and I can enter, and it's now pulling that file from the phone through USB to my computer. If I wanted to push something, again I can type in phone, I can type in push, I can hit enter. Now it's listing everything in the current directory and subdirectories of where I am, and I can type something like, uh, let's see, Tragic Rabbit, and I can hit enter. Now it's listing again 
all the directories on my phone and I can just type in music and I can say, yeah, I want to push that over to the phone and I just push it to the phone. So again, I don't have to type out all those long commands because if I do them regularly, I create aliases, scripts, or functions. So no, just because you're using the shell doesn't mean you have to type out these long, complicated commands all the time. You, uh, you can also create icons on your desktop that run scripts or functions. So you can just click an icon. That's why I do on my phone a lot. I have Termux on there. People go, oh, you use the shell on your phone? Yeah, well, you know, I plug it into my computer or I SSH into it. I create all these aliases to where if I'm at the shell, I can just type in, you know, a couple of letters. Or I have, uh, here, let me unlock my phone again and type in phone. And I can go screen. And I'll drag over here. And you can see I have a list of commands here. I can click on one of these, like NetScan. NetScan looks at my IP address and then lists out all the IPs in a range and scans them and actually creates an HTML file and opens up in the web browser so I can click on these links in the web browser. Uh, these ones create, uh, I click on either of these. One is a script that I wrote that um, generates an animated GIF. The other one is the same thing, but it loops it back and forth, so kind of ping pongs it. But it will, when I click on it, it opens up the terminal with a list of my most recent photos using FCF and then I can choose one of those our uh, videos and I click one of those videos and it will generate a GIF for me and I'm all good to go. So yeah, I use the shell but I create shortcuts on my phone. You can create icons using Termux too but they all look the same so I prefer the list view. <laughs> Otherwise they all just, it's like you got to read the names anyway. Um, one more thing, you can, like I said, you can do aliases, functions, scripts, you can have icons. Another option, great option when you're on your desktop, is shortcut keys. So here's an example. Here I am at my page on YouTube. If I was to right click one of these and say copy link, or I actually use my keyboard because I have a plugin, uh, Vimium, and I just uh, type YF and it gives me some things and I can go AK and I just copied that to my clipboard. So once I have a URL copied, so either using the keyboard there or going copy like that, I just hit my modifier key and Y, and it's now going to start streaming that using MPV, which I prefer, no ads, even though I have ad blockers anyway, but I like MPV. I like MPV, I like um, the, uh, the controls, I can speed things up in more increments than YouTube allows, faster than YouTube allows, I can slow it down more than YouTube allows, I can do screenshots, I can put it back to regular speed. There's all these different things I can do. And you can do that for any program. And it's also pulling down the format that I want, the resolution that I want. I have a check, is this, does this resolution exist? If so, pull it down. If not, go to this next format. If not, just use whatever the default is. Because I prefer, I don't need 4K videos, especially if I'm on my little Chromebook somewhere. Uh, I, I don't need 4K videos going because it's not gonna play right. So I go for a lower, re lower resolution by default. But I have, almost every key on my keyboard is a shortcut uh, if I'm using it with with the, the Windows key or whatever you want to call it, or Control Alt something. And so, yeah, using the shell doesn't mean that you type everything out every single time. Using a shell allows you to simplify it and take these repetitive tasks and make it so they're not so repetitive for you, but repetitive for the computer, which is what computers are for. They're for repeating menial tasks over and over and over again. So anyway, food for thought. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Films by Chris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. And I hope you have a happy new year.